All right, ladies and gentlemen, section 4.7, completing the square. Now, I'm going to go over this the way that I taught my students. So your teacher may have done it slightly different. Okay, so please be advised that your teacher may have, have done it slightly different, but you're going to end up with the same result. Okay. When I taught this, I'm, al I'm always telling my students, what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. So as I'm going through these problems, that is what I'm going with, okay? So, please bear with me if your teacher showed it to you slightly different, okay? We're doing the same thing, it's just we're setting it up different at the beginning. All right, so what I want to do is I want to write the quadratic function in vertex form by completing the square. All right, so we're going to break this up, okay? So, we're going to rewrite this as x squared plus 8x, okay, and I'm going to put a blank right here, and then I'm going to put the plus 5 there, okay, now this is where I may be different than the way your teacher taught you, so on the left side, I am going to put the y, and then I'm going to put plus a blank, okay, so that's, your teacher might have shown that part a little bit different, okay, just go with what you know how to do, you should end up with the exact same answer. All right, now I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and group this, and I'm going to complete the square. All right, so half of 8 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to put 16 in those two spots. All right, now I'm going to rewrite y plus 16 equals. Now, since this is now a perfect square trinomial, I can write that as x plus 4 squared plus 5. And I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 16. So y equals x plus 4 squared minus 11. That is ver the vertex form. Okay, now I'm going to extend it a little bit. What would the vertex be? Okay, the vertex would be negative 4, negative 11. It didn't ask for that, but I wanted to throw that in there. All right, number 20. So again, I'm gonna, I might do this slightly different, but we're going to end up with the same result. So first of all, I'm going to rewrite this as 2x squared minus 12x plus a blank minus a 7. And then on the right, left side, I'm going to go ahead and add that blank over there. Again, your teacher might have added it to, or subtracted it from the other side. Now, in this problem, everyone, we've got a 2 in front of the x squared, and this is a 12x. So what we have to do is we have to pull out the distributive property backwards. We're going to pull out a 2. So that means that I'm going to have two parentheses, x squared minus 6x plus the blank minus the 7. But again, what you do to one side, you do to the other. So let me put this blank on this side. And I'm going to put that 2 in front of that.
All right, so to keep it balanced, what I, again, what I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, I can factor this, or I'm not, I guess I'm not quite there yet. What's half of negative six? And then square it. So that means the blank would be nine. All right. So now I have two parentheses x minus three squared minus seven. On this side, I have f of x plus 18. Okay, I want to get f of x by itself, so I'm going to subtract the 18. So my final answer is f of x equals 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 25. That is my vertex form. And if I would ask you what the vertex is... You would simply tell me it is 3, negative 25. All right. Two more for this section. Solve the quadratic equations by completing the square. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to rewrite this. X squared plus 2x plus a blank, close it, plus 7 equals 0 plus a blank. Again, your teacher might have shown you slightly different than this, but you should end up with the same result. All right, half of 2, which is 1, 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to put a 1 in this blank and a 1 in this blank. All right, now this is a perfect square trinomial, so that would be x plus 1 squared plus 7 equals 1. All right, now we're solving this one, so that means we need to get x by itself. So we are going to take away 7 and have x plus 1 squared equals negative 6. Square root both sides. X plus 1 equals positive negative square roots of negative 6. All right, now don't forget you can't have a negative inside. So we're, we'll take care of that here in a minute. So we're going to, the next thing I'm going to do though is subtract 1. Okay, so I'm going to go right to the answer here. So x equals negative 1 plus or minus. Okay, the negative inside becomes the i and then the square root of 6. All right, so that is our final answer. Again, that square root of the negative becomes i. All right, now number 22, this really should say, it really should say equals zero. Okay, I think that's a typo. All right, you will notice everyone that it's the exact same problem as number 20, except number 20, we put it in vertex form. All right, but I'll go through all of the steps again. I wouldn't have to. I could just use that and solve. Okay, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the steps again. So here we go. So I'm going to rewrite this. 2x squared minus 12x plus a blank minus 7 equals 
Okay, I'm going to skip zero plus anything is whatever that is. So I'm just going to put a blank on that side. I don't need to put the zero. All right, I'm going to pull out the two. And I have x squared minus 6x plus a blank minus 7 equals. Now remember, you pulled out a 2, so you got to put that 2 on the other side. Because whatever that number is in the blank spot also has to be multiplied by 2. All right, half of negative 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So what do we have? We have 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 7 equals 18. Okay, and again, you can see that up above. Okay, we had that same thing. We just had the 18 on the other side. Okay, but I don't want to subtract 18 now. Since I'm solving it, I'm going to go ahead and add 7. So that's equal to 25. Divide by the negative 2 or 2, not negative 2, divide by 2. Okay, I'm going to have to go over here. So we have x minus 3 squared equals 25 over 2. Square root that. So x minus 3 equals positive or negative. Now, we did one like this earlier in the packet, okay? Um, that becomes 5 over the square root of 2. Now, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Okay, sorry, this is getting kind of squishy here. Let me switch colors so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so this becomes x equals 3 plus or minus 5 over the square roots of 2. Now, remember, we can't leave it that way, so we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. And we should get a final answer of 3 plus or minus 5 square roots of 2 over 2. A lot of things to remember, okay? You really have to practice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good luck on that part of the test.